Hello, friends. Take that thing off of your mouth. I'd like to keep it on, please. It's a lip sync. What part of that do you not understand? I've got to say, I don't think that I was expecting how vulnerable it makes me feel to uh, not have a beard. I had a, a, a much stronger sense of security. Um, and I know it's such a strange thing to feel like that's coming from literal hair on your face. And it's, it's a little uncomfortable. But I am leaning into that discomfort. Yeah, it's been, well, let's see, today is the 8th. Today's the 8th. So it's been properly one week since I've shaved. Um, and this is what one week of facial hair growth looks like on one wild Lucas. Hmm. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm hoping that by next week it will look more properly like a beard instead of something that somebody accidentally let grow out because he got a little too depressed and so forgot to shave. I've been thinking all week, of course, about what one thing I'm gonna share uh, that I've learned. And it's tricky because I feel like I learned a lot. I'm reading a lot of books right now. I'm reading Great Singers on Great Singing. I'm reading Voice Teacher Influencer by John Henney. I'm reading Contagious by Jenna Berger. I just finished Atomic Habits by James Clear. Like, I'm, I'm trying to keep my head full of ideas. <laughs> It seems fitting to talk about singing, so I'll share that this week um, I have been experimenting a lot with, I guess I'll say range extension from a sort of bottom-up approach rather than a top-down approach, and that's been very interesting for me. See, I used to sing as a tenor, and there are probably some videos still floating around in the annals of YouTube of me um, singing that way, and so I have as a countertenor um, actually quite a bit of facility singing in my middle voice, but I always kind of thought that was fake. I shouldn't use that if I wanted to be recognized as a countertenor. I picked up this copy of Great Singers on Great Singing that was gifted to me by a voice teacher a really long time ago, and I read all of the interviews with the mezzos, and pretty much across the board, they're saying that they switch from head voice into chest voice around E, E flat, F sort of area of their voice. As I've been doing some of these bottom up exercises, I've been finding that it's a lot easier for me to actively visualize the sound that I want. I'll say that my voice responds a little bit more readily to the intention that I have. I will say that I haven't really warmed up or sung at all today, so I'm a little hesitant to sing for this camera right now. but. In the spirit of growth, I will show you a little bit of what I'm talking about, show you some of the exercises that I've been doing. that exercises like that have given me a lot more flexibility, particularly in some of the pieces that are in my aria package that involve just living in this part of the voice. And then the other thing I try to do is I try to alternate between head voice and chest voice on the same note like this. Which is really hard to do without like a big old crack in between, but what that does I feel like is it gives me a really really clear picture of what is going on in here, whether there's anything that's engaging or that is getting in the way that's just totally unnecessary. So anyway, that's my week in summary. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing. I'm gonna be doing one of these every single week. So I look forward to seeing you all there. And in the meantime, stay honest, stay you.